Hello, welcome to January's Community Day where I do a watercolor tutorial. And for this one, I decided to go with some pretty fun colors, not something realistic, but I based it off of seeing portraits throughout the museum. And there's certain portraits that I really like that have accessories on the people that have a specific color that's kind of the main color. And rather than doing this as a realistic one, I chose that icy blue since it's winter. So my accessory went along with that too, adding that winter hat. You can either just paint, I outlined with a pencil first and you could just paint, or you can try out some other materials. So I used oil pastels to outline the hat. I used crayons. Whenever you press pretty hard, it makes a nice waxy resist and it shows through the paint. I also used some watercolor pencils on the eyes or regular colored pencils and then, of course, I painted with the watercolor paints. So you can use any or all of those supplies to try it out. The other thing I did is I used the blue as my main color and the cool colors, a little bit of purple, but I made the outline or the background really pop out. And the reason it pops out so much is because it's an, a complementary color. So if we look at a color wheel, my main color was blue. So I looked across and opposite of the blue and chose orange as my background. So you can do any color choices. You can make it realistic or you can go wild and crazy, but give it a try with something a little different than what you're used to doing and see what you like about it. For this portrait, I'm going to sketch out a small face and make sure that I have enough room for accessories today. So I'm starting out with a plus sign. That plus sign is there for reference so that I get things even, symmetrical, the same on both sides, but as a reflection, if I folded it in half, they would match, and just placed in the correct proportions. So what you just saw me do is put an eye right in the center. And the reason the eye is in the center is to give me enough spacing between the other two. Once I have drawn those, I can erase that away. But that's just a really good way to start it out and not put the eyes too close or too far apart. I use a set of parentheses for the iris because the eyelid usually covers the top and the bottom a little. Put a circle for the pupil, the dark black section of the eye, and a little white highlight. Extra details like an eyelid or eyelashes can be added. But remember, this is meant to be fun. It doesn't have to be completely realistic. It can be a bit more on a graphic side. So, it's up to you how many details and how realistic you actually make it. The next step, I'm putting a set of rainbows above the eye. And that's going to be my guideline for my eyebrows and where the bridge of my nose will come down between the eyes. To make a nose, I'm making a little dip or smile in the center, another set of parentheses on each side, and for the nostrils, I'm just going to put kind of a little shadow rather than deep dark holes. For the lip I'm going for that dip again and then crusting it up and back down and then curving down below and finishing it off by splitting it in two. So sometimes I start with the actual shape of the head first and then fit my facial features in there. For this one I decided I wanted to work my chin around it. And because I'm not going extremely realistic, I'm heading for a more angular look. It's not exactly symmetrical. I'm putting the neck down below and out into the shoulders. If you see any shirt line, you can add that. Mine gets cut off a bit. And then the hair or the accessories. Do you have a hat on? Do you have any earrings or um, glasses? Anything, whether it's a boy or girl, imagine what accessories you would put. Would you see the ears? 
would I put ears here or would they get covered up by the hair? So my accessory, since I'm going for a wintry look, is I'm going to put a curve here to make it look like a hat is resting on this person's head. There's the rim of it, the part that will go up and over, the top part of the head, and we'll give it a nice big pom-pom or puff ball. So big that it goes right off the edge of my paper. And then I'm going to make hair come out and down from underneath the hat here. We'll go with a curly look. So that's my quick sketch. I'll erase my guidelines, whatever guidelines I have left. And then to make this even more unique, I can mix materials. It doesn't just have to be watercolor. So I have watercolor pencils, crayons, and oil pastels. I'm going to first take my crayon and where I want the highlight in my eye to make it look shiny, I'm going to press pretty hard and color my little white dot. I am also going to add some black into the center before I paint it and I'm going to use a colored pencil in the middle. That way the paint doesn't run there. The rest of it can be outlined in any way you want if you want to outline it. So I'm going to start off with the lips. We'll give her purple lips, create a few of those lines that make it look curved. I'm going to outline the eye. You know what? I still want to outline with the black. Make it really noticeable. Give her those eyelashes. And the rest can be done with the color. So if I'm going for blue eyes, I'll even put some lines that radiate out from the center to make them look like they round around it. And then I'm going to move into my bigger materials. Oh, eyelash or eyelids, I forgot about those. But for the eyebrows, I want to create some hairy texture. So I'll use my crayon to make it look a little zigzagged, not just a smooth rainbow line, but actual hair. I'll continue that hair coming down and out of the hat and framing the face. I can add in a little bit of another color so it looks like it has some highlights, but I'm not coloring anything in fully. I'll let the paint do that for me. And then I'm going to outline this nose a bit. Okay, so I'm going to my oil pastels for the hat and the edge of the face. We'll stick with the blue for the face and the neckline. But for the hair, or not the hair, the hat and the shirt, I'll accessorize with the purple. And what this oil pastel is going to be really good for is it's going to create this barrier or wall that will hold the paint in. Make this pom-pom fuzzy and fluffy. Create a shirt down below. and I'm ready for my paint. This barrier is oily, so where the wax of the crayon is, the wax resists water, the oil from the oil pastel will resist the water, and let's move this to my right hand, and it's going to allow me to paint without it running into a color that's right next to it. So I'm going to create a wash of this light blue color all over the face to start. Now remember, I'm not doing something realistic. I decided for this one to go with more of a mood, 
creating this cool tone with all of the blues and purples since I'm going for this winter effect. You can pick any colors you want. You can make it realistic if you prefer. But sometimes I like to just experiment, try out new things and see what happens. Now the eye and the lips were done with a watercolor pencil. So what that means is I'm able to actually spread the color over top and it fills in that space with the blue. I'll re-dip into the water and now the purple. So I'm using a pointed brush so I can carefully go around the edges, but it's spreading that color for me. If I want, I think I'll create some ribbing or lines along the rim of my hat so they'll be more straight in the center, kind of flare out or curve outward on either side. And I'll go back in now with my paint. And whenever I do this, just one quick swipe over top. I don't want to scrub it over top of my oil too much, but notice that you can still see the lines that I have already drawn. It also is blocking it from moving outward beyond the edge of my hat. It's creating this wall so it doesn't spread. And if I want to change up the color a little while it's still wet, something fun to do is mix more than one color together that I know will blend well. So since I'm going with blues and purples for this one, I'm going to actually take a little bit of the blue. Let's see, I'll go with this blue here and I'll outline this, come back with a little bit of the purple again and right where they are wet against the other wet paint, we're going to bleed together more. And you can see what kind of effect you get and spread that around some. All right, hair. We'll go with a real light blue for the hair so you can really see the lines that I made. Mm, you know what? That's a little too close to the face. I think I'll go with this brighter royal blue instead. Spread this throughout. Let the highlights from the crayon shine through. See how it's resisting? It's kind of making the water bead up. And last but not least, we can't forget the neck. We want to make sure that the neck is a similar color to the face because it's still the same skin, but it's going to have a little bit of a shadow because your face is raised up above your neck. So your chin would be casting a shadow there. So I'll go back in with that light color, but this time I'm not putting quite as much water on my brush and I have a little more paint on my brush before I spread it out across the neck. If you have any shirt, oh, I just realized you couldn't see that as well. If you have any shirt exposed, make sure you paint that in. And then you can also create a background color if you would like. So for this, I'm going to go with a nice bright orange, which is completely opposite of my entire composition. My entire person is done in cool colors and I chose the orange so I can contrast it or make it look like it's opposite and it really makes the person pop out. And because I have the wall around it, it's not spreading and bleeding into each other and turning into a brown. Instead, it's staying step separate. 